Hello beautiful people, I'll be dropping some more information at the end of this video, so please watch till the end. Thank you. Hello beautiful people, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Obichi Imo and on this channel I talk about cake business. But in today's video, I want to show you how to use this open thermometer. It's the one I've been using for quite some time now and we're going to learn how to use it. So I got this oven thermometer seven years ago when I got my fabricated oven and if you've watched my video before this, you understand um, this video better. So if you're yet to watch that video, I would encourage you to watch it after now. So let's delve right in. You can see the temperatures right here. I'm using a skewer, a kebab stick, so you would understand better. So this is Fahrenheit and then this is your Celsius. Okay, so you have these numbers right here, which are the temperature indicators. And if you see, we have 350 degrees in the middle. You understand why if you've watched my video, like I said, look at it again, 350 degrees. So I've mentioned that if you bake below this temperature, you would have a certain result with your case. If you bake between here and here, and if you bake beyond here, there's also a certain result or certain types of things you're going to see on your cake. Now, it's basically a simple process. You have your 100 degrees Fahrenheit here, 150, 200, 50, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600. And then you have your 50 degrees Celsius, 100, 150, 200, 250, and 300. 100 degrees Celsius now you're either told to bake at 350 degrees I saw someone that said she bakes at 150 degrees Celsius which is also between the range of 300 around here right she says she bakes at 150 degrees Celsius so it's like 300 degrees thereabout and it takes longer for her to bake she mentioned that it actually takes longer for her to bake at this temperature so how to use it is that you're going to turn on your oven I'm going to show you how to do that you turn on your oven and then you just place this on your oven rack and the temperature is going to read up to a certain degree of course you have to keep watching it so you're going to watch and when it gets to that point where you need to bake at you put your cakes inside your oven so i'm going ahead to put it on the rack is it that you place it on the rack like so or you hang it on the rack so this is my fabricated oven and you can see it's at 100 degrees fahrenheit this is after 10 minutes i have it at 200 degrees and then i just allowed it to stay inside my oven and it started to build now this is after i turned off my oven it started reducing so some weeks back i had issues with the temperature of my oven and i didn't even know that there was a problem i just know that i baked this cake for over three hours and it did not get baked as you can see at some point i just had to take it out of the oven now this is the consequence of baking at a low oven temperature the fire was on but it wasn't baking my cakes at all this is another cake and you can see how it looks as well no caramelization and this part was because i added coconut flakes to this and it became so oily so it affected the batter and then also my cake wasn't properly baked now this is the result of oven temperature being high so we tried to fix it and it became high someone came to fix it for me and it became so high and my cakes were getting burnt in the process getting caramelized and even getting burnt like over caramelized if there's anything like that in the process now there are some tips that i want to share with you when it comes to using your oven temperature and i would please plead with you to listen as i share but before that, let me also show you my red velvet cake. And this is what happened as a result of a high oven temperature as well. So it had a dome. It was properly done. It was cooked, but it was, you know, look at, it had this crack in the middle that I had to cut off. I had to trim off so much from the cake before using it. And also it had little brown patches under. If you look at it, you can see it's not so visible, but if you look, you can see those brown things under those brown parts. I usually don't have this on my red velvet cake but it's because of the oven temperature now these are the tips that i'll be sharing and i want you to please listen now when using your oven thermometer you need to preheat your oven to the required temperature for baking your cake all right so if the recipe calls for 300 320 350 375 whatever it is it calls for you need to preheat your oven to that degree before you put your cakes in so this tells you it's not a guess what kind of thing. You cannot just say, oh, I'm going to pre preheat for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 5 minutes. Preheat up to the point where you need to have the degree for baking and then put your cakes inside. 
The second thing you need to note is that different baked goods have different required times for baking. So cakes bake differently at a different temperature than cookies, than pizza, and all of that and all. But you know we're talking about cakes in this video. So just please have that at the back of your mind that different baked goods have different um, required temperature and duration slash time for baking. So the third thing is baking time or duration depends on a number of variables. So somebody asked me on my previous video on oven temperature, how long it takes for a cake to bake. And I said on an average, it takes like for 40, from 45 minutes to one hour. Now that is for me, that is for my cakes and that's for the kind of oven that I use. I know that in Nigeria, most of us have this fabricated oven. So that's what works for me, but you need to understand that Variables like oven size, oven type, your cake batter, whether it's margarine or butter based or oil based, your type and size of pan, the height of your pan, the amount of batter you have in your pan, what the recipe calls for, the recipe requirement, the cake type as well, also go a long way to determine how long you're going to bake that cake for. The fourth thing you need to know is that it's okay to rotate your cakes while they're baking. I do that when I have multiple cakes baking in the oven and I'm trying to check if they're done, checking for doneness. I just try to rotate. I move from left to right, right to left, upper rack to middle rack and all of that. So I rotate and it's okay for you to do that just so that you can have a good and evenly baked cake. The fifth thing is that cakes such as fruit cake, rich fruit cake, and oil-based chocolate cake, red velvet cake, or oil-based recipes tend to take longer time to bake than butter-based cakes. I mentioned this earlier in one of the points. So, like for fruit cake, it's advised that you cook slow, cook with a low temperature, and then give it time to bake. And that is one of the reasons bakers say rich fruit cakes or fruit cakes are more expensive than others because it takes a longer time to bake aside the ingredients it stays longer in the oven so it's slow cooked and it takes longer to bake than normal cakes and the final point is this to check for doneness you insert a skewer or a toothpick or a kebab stick into your cake and it would come out clean it should come out clean so this is an example of a nicely baked caramelized fluffy moist cake i hope that you learned from this video please let me know if you did thank you so much for watching please don't forget to smash the like button please like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you're yet to subscribe if you have questions please drop them in the comments below as well until i see you in the next video stay happy stay safe and stay blessed